it do? This is your brother Bishop of Bishop's Own TV, and today I'm gonna give y'all a little something different. This time I'm gonna do a book check. We're gonna, we're gonna do a book check this episode right here. Just a little something. You know, a lot of people like to know where I get a lot of my views from when it comes to uh, the fabric, the foundation of American history, and just the current consciousness of America as a whole. In, in this relation to black people and black culture. What is black culture? What is the foundation of black culture? What is this? You know, you want to know why I'm so passionate or one of the reasons why I'm so passionate is because I do a lot of research and I don't just regurgitate information that I read from uh, memes and different quotes on Twitter or from uh, charismatic individuals who end up scamming people. I actually read books and these are five books. These are not the only books that I've read. I've always read books since I was yay high. I was I was yay high, a little lad, reading all kind of books because that's you know my household. We had to read books. I mean, it was if you didn't read books outside of what they taught you, what they conditioned you to read in the public school system. If you didn't read any books in the household, my household, that was your ass. You know what I mean? So this is just continuing the tradition of actually doing research from people who are really invested in, in giving this information, people who are actually on the ground doing the work, people who are respectable. These are respectable individuals in, in their own fields who have provided a lot of insightful information when it comes to our history, when it comes to American history. So, they can, so you can put things into proper context instead of, again, relying on propaganda by you know false prophets or what you see on mainstream TV. So enough talking. Let's just get through some of the books that I've been reading as of recently. I'll give you five books. So let's start with this one right here: Slavery in African Ethnicities in the Americas. Yeah, as you can see, I'm still reading that. See that right there? Slavery in African Ethnicities in the Americas. This is a. Uh, book is by Gwendolyn Midlow Hall. Gwendolyn Midlow Hall, uh, she's originally from New Orleans. Um, this is a white woman, but this white woman has done a lot of research on specific ethnicities that were brought here to America. And she really puts into detail, at least from um, a colonial Louisiana perspective, on the different ethnicities that were brought here to this country. And when we're talking about the ethnicities, we're talking about, again, as the book says, the African ethnicities that would eventually make Black Americans, African Americans, whatever you want to call yourselves. But before we were those groups of people, before we were Black, before we were um, African Americans, we actually still had our identities intact. A lot of our people still had identities intact that came directly from West and Central Africa. And she details with actual, actual facts, actual data, historical data that can still be found in certain parts of this country. It's not as abundantly available or readily available as some other countries do who kept track records of specific ethnic groups that they brought over via the transatlantic slave trade. But it's still a bit of information that you don't get in mainstream history. So. This, this one right here, Slavery, again, Slavery and African Ethnicities in America. I think it's a good book, man. You should read it. Let's check it out. Um, that's book one. Book two, Stamped from the Beginning. Stamped from the Beginning. This is by brother Abram. I said Abram. This is for the brother Ibram X. Kendi. Ibram X. Kendi. And man, this is a good book right here because it really just goes into detail of the origins of some of the racist ideologies that we still have today in this country. And the brother, he's a he's a professor of history. Um, he goes into detail pretty good about, like I say, the origins of racial politics, racial beliefs in this country. And this book, man, it's a good book, man. It's a uh, shoot New York Times bestseller. Must be doing something. Y'all see that New York Times bestseller? I mean, I don't know. I mean, shit, Lil Flip wrote a book and we got New York Times bestseller. So the Lil Boosie. I'm just joking. New York Times. Might got Bronx. 
best time to sell it, but it didn't give a good time to sell it. So this book right here, Stamped from the Beginning, The Definitive History of Racist Ideas in America by the brother Ibram X. Kendi is a good book. It's a good book to, like I say, learn, learn where some of these things that we that still plague this country today came from as far as racist ideologies. So that's book two. Book three. Woo! <laughs> like Christmas present, like Christmas present right here. Uh, the Counter Revolution of 1776, Slave Resistance in the Origins of the United States of America. Boy, I said, I don't know what, I don't know, I'm like, <laughs> I ruined it right there. But yeah, the Counter Revolution of 1776. Uh, man, this goes into great detail of a lot of uh, slave revolts and just kind of where some of these uh, policies that plague black people. Where that came from, a lot of a lot of the laws of the land during chattel slavery really rose through several different revolts throughout chattel slavery, throughout colonial history of America, and even after the colonial period. So, and this book goes into detail about that, you know. And um, this book was uh, created by Gerald Horn. He's also a, a historian, a historian in the academia. Feels. So, again, man, this is, I know, it's, it, don't, it don't have the sexy, sexy pics like what you see on YouTube. I know a lot of people are enticed by charismatic YouTube individuals who have no credentials whatsoever when it comes to the field of history, science, socioeconomics, politics, and whatnot. I get that, but every now and then you can go back to these books, books of weapons, these are weapons. So this is one you should read right here. This is another one. All right, that's book three. Book four. This is this is a good one right now. Y'all gonna get upset. I know y'all gonna get upset, but reading is fundamental, as they say. Africanisms in American culture. Africanisms in American culture. This book, and this is the second edition. Africanisms in American culture. This book was edited by Joseph E. Holloway. Now this book right here, it is good for, for really getting an understanding of African American culture. I'm using African American in, in this context because again, to distance yourself away from Africa, it's a tragedy. That's why you need to read these books so you can better understand why you even have the type of mentality where you kind of distance yourself from your ancestors. Um, lineage from your ancestors' homeland. Something that you didn't even agree with. Something that your ancestors didn't agree to leave Africa. But that's another topic for another day. But this right here explains in detail some of the some of the traditions that we have, some of the things that are part of our culture, where it comes from. It, it gives you proof of where these things come from. So again, this right here, Africanisms in American culture is a, it's a great book you should read. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to finish reading it. I haven't finished reading this yet. I got so many books, man. I can only do so much. So that's book number four. Number five. Right here. The Ledger in the Chain. How Domestic Slave Traders Shaped America. Y'all see that right here? Now this one right here is by Joshua D. Rockman a professor from the University of Alabama, a historian, a historical professor, a professor of history, I should say, I, my words, excuse me, especially, I, I don't want y'all to think I can't read, I can but brother can read now, brother can read, it's just, I just want to, so, <laughs> I'm just joking, but this book right here, man, um, this is a really good book, it tells um, the story or actual events of the domestic slave trade, a lot of people when studying the slave trade, we're talking about the slave trade in America, we often don't look at the domestic slave trade that happened here on the uh, in the country of the United States of people being shipped from the upper south to the lower south, you know, which is why you have a black belt to begin with now in this country. I mean, we're talking about to this day. The reason why you have so many black people in the south was due to the domestic slave trade. And this tells the detail, this tells the story from the perspective of three successful um, slave traders, which, uh, let's see, goes from Isaac Franklin, John Armfield, and Rice Ballard. These were 
real people. These were real individuals who kept documentation and accounts of the domestic slave trade, the involvement in it, and just the ins and outs of this domestic slave trade and how it shaped America. You know, um, again, this is a really, really good book. It puts a lot of things into perspective. Once again, it's a ledger in the chain how domestic slave trade shaped America. Um, these are five books that I highly, highly recommend if you want to learn more about American history and the role of chattel slavery in American history. It can explain how America is shaped the way it is now. I'm not talking about um, physically, but just culturally, how it's shaped. Um, just everything that's involved in American culture that you would not get in any public school system. But those parents who want critical race theory in schools but are not getting that you can get it from these books just simply buy these books purchase these books online and then just read them with your children you know that's what my what my father did that with us and i'm doing that with my children don't rely on public education system to educate your child fully just make sure they give you the, the basics of math science um literature you need to know english and that's about it now let me get out my soapbox box and bid you all a farewell and all that good stuff. And until next time, holla.